2261, what we do with, with uh, where we're going to be in 2018 is really the, the key thing here. And we're working on that daily with our legislative group and also with our OSBI group. A little set today can be mind-bogglingly numbing as when you look at the, uh, the de detail here. Just a little bit of, um, of context. In Washington, we have 147 legislators in the House and the Senate. We have about 400 employees in OSPI. And we have our biggest bill is about 130, 40 pages, 2261. Okay, again, 147 ledge, 400 employees in OSPI, and 140 page bills. The federal government has 535 legislators in the House and Senate, 4,000 employees in the Department of Ed, think that through, and their largest bills are 1,100 pages. Good examples of that would be ARRA and also the No Child Left Behind. In addition, as David showed you, they can print money. We can't. <laughs> we, we have to balance the budget. They can print money. The reason we're here today is because they printed a pile of it for us to go ahead and use to take care of our economic problems that we have here. Now, given all that, with the money comes the accountability, and that, that kind of is a challenge. What you've had today so far is a good looking federal level about what this is, and I grant it, it is complex, it's difficult. I've been into it for about eight months, and I still learn things every time. But in the state, our job is to go ahead and bring that back to the earth here and what it really means for you and both of what you can spend and how you need to be accountable for that. And that's what we'll be doing here for the next hour and 15 or so. I want to thank, first of all, Mac, Paul, John, and Barbara, particularly Mac from, from WASA for putting this together. I, I've been here a number of times. I've never had this large a group and this much interest. Nancy Moffat as well from uh, WASBO. This is a really a good opportunity as well. And I want to, uh, before I, I introduce Judy Hartman, I want to introduce our kind of crew here that's going to come up. We have Bob Harmon, who's the Assistant Superintendent for Special Programs and, and Accountability, Federal Accountability. There's Bob. He's, we also have, thank you. We have Dr. Doug Gill, who's the Director of Special, uh, special Education. Okay. Gail Polly, who's the uh, Director of Title I. Uh, Janelle Newman is where is she? Janelle Newman is the director, uh, assistant superintendent for uh, district and school improvement, and uh, JoLynn Berge is the director of uh, let's see budget and fiscal services. Now JoLynn, just stand up for a second. She is the messenger when <laughs> and, and 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 when she comes and talks about what you have to do to get the SFS up, you can go ahead and shoot her if you want, but she's tough, I'm telling you right. Those of you Grace, Grace Harper people, she commutes from Wishka every day to, to Olympia. So whatever you do, she'll be able to handle it. But no, in all honesty, she's gonna have some really you have to do's coming up and I wanna be uh, just let you know ahead of time that she's the messenger. Leave it at that. Okay, a um, couple of other things before we get started. We've got, let's see, two, two, two. Um, my own background, just to make, most of you probably know me from the soups lane, but I, I come from the field, 34 and a half years in the trenches from teachers up to superintendent, last 11 at Yelm. So my first eight months in the agency has been really neat because I've learned about the SCA, State Educational Agency, that I hadn't had before. But I really do come from the field, and my job is to make sure that what you have out there gets to Randy, and I think I do real, work real hard at doing that. Uh, I also want to say that um, when the slides you have in front of you here are four to a page, which is the good news, you can read them. The bad news is you'll have to write on them as you go through. They, they do not include all the stuff we'll be doing the next hour or so. Uh, we decided just to shorten that for the purposes of just paper copying or whatever. So these are hopefully the ones you'll want to, uh, uh, to, to be there with you. And I also want to tell you ahead, when you look at the detail here, Bob Harmon, tr uh, trust me, we've talked about this, is going to move through this fairly rapidly because what's going to happen in this session is, or this uh, conference is, once you get a little bit of the flavor of what we think you ought to know, the next session is go to your breakout sessions and really get your questions answered. Because obviously Bob, Gail, Doug, Janelle will be around a, a lot in terms of trying to answer those specific questions. So today is just kind of slide through it, give you a good flavor for so everybody has a set, and then we'll get the detail later on in the breakout sessions. Okay? And I think I'll leave it at that. I want to introduce, just to, to start this off, a uh, person I'm getting to know fairly well because we're both involved with Race to the Top and we'll learn a lot more about that today from Washington's point. 
And that is uh, Judy Hartman, who's the uh, special advi advisor for K-12 educational policy for the governor. She's taught in Tumwater, was an administrator in Tacoma, has worked for the WA, also worked for Buster Brulette back in the old days in the, uh, the state educational agency as well. And she has a message from Governor Gregoire about our efforts in this field. Thank you. Thank you, Alan, um, and welcome to everyone who is here. The turnout um, today, I think, is a testament to the opportunities and the challenges that we have ahead of us. So um, from the governor uh, to you, congratulations for taking on the challenges that are ahead. Um, I was asked just to say a few words from the governor's perspective about how all of this fits into what we're doing as a state and in education specifically. These are unprecedented times, and this is an unprecedented opportunity. What the ARRA brings to us um, is a phenomenal set of resources, but with many more um, avenues for us to examine our practice, to collect information, to think about how we're doing things today and how we might do them tomorrow. We can also connect this then with the work that we have been doing in our state in the past. And this is really the key point of the message uh, from the governor to you all, so that you know that she does not look at this work ahead with regard to these federal resources as something that is separate and apart from where we have been and what we are doing as a state. The intent is to build upon the good work that we have done here. We have set a goal for our state to educate more of our citizens to higher levels. We have set forth studies and put forth um, processes for us to examine and now to figure out how we're going to implement new funding streams to support our uh, education efforts in the state, early learning, K-12, through higher ed. And of course, the focus for us in K-12 right now is to implement House Bill 2261 and the, education, and the funding pieces that are associated with that. The governor is very grateful to the federal government for its support during this economic downturn in our country. And if you just pause for a second while we're looking ahead at the resources to come, think about where we might have been without the billion, one billion, two thousand dollars that have come to Washington State just in the state fiscal stabilization fund. Where would we be in our school districts without those resources? The governor is also grateful that the uh, Congress, as well as the president, has shown through ARRA its commitment to education, which we hope, even given the economic future that was presented to us a little earlier, continues through the next uh, budgets at the federal level and the support from the department. I would also like to say just a brief thank you to the partners that I am working with at the Office of the Superintendent of Public Instruction. There are three of us who are kind of leading and trying to coordinate this work. We have a goal of trying to use the processes, programs, and procedures that we have in place to the best of our ability so that this can be as seamless as possible. Uh, Alan Burke as the Deputy, Edie Harding as the Executive Director of the State Board, and myself um, talk, email, um, meet, almost continually these days, and the resources of the individuals that Alan introduced to you just a moment ago are priceless to us because they have experience, and along with you, we will be able to do this together. Thank you so much for being here. getting this down and this transfer. Thank you, Judy, appreciate that very much. And uh, from the OSPI's point of view, it's wonderful working with the governor's office on these issues as well. Okay, we'll start our show here real quick. Um, you've seen this one already. You've got the essentially the $48 million um, of the SFSF grant, and we'll be talking about that a little bit as well. The four assurances and then the race to the top is on the right-hand side. Basically, we'll be talking about the pot of money on the left with Joe Lynn 
talking about title um, in a little bit, and then at the end, time permitting, Judy's going to say a few words about Race to the Top, and then we have three breakouts on Race to the Top. I'm doing one, and Lisa McFarland from the League of Education Voters is doing the other two. We've shared slides, so just if you're, for your planning,